badass business owners. Welcome to another episode of the Local Small Business Coach Podcast, where each episode we work on getting you to $100,000 in take-home pay. So if you're all ready to boost your profits, increase your sales, improve your processes, and develop stronger teams so you can stop living job to job, then let's dive in. Hey, badass business owners. Welcome back to the Local Small Business Coach Podcast. Hey, uh, last episode, if you listened to it, I know I kind of was like going on and on and just really passionate about helping you guys be successful. And one of the things that I talked about inside that podcast was about, you know, your bottom line profits and paying yourself first and making sure that no matter what job you do, uh, and when you add up all your jobs, that you're making the income that you want to make. And I want to talk about that a little bit more on today's episode. Today's episode is going to be about profit first, it, paying yourself, uh, you know, keeping that in mind. And I want to kind of talk a little bit about how to make that happen. Uh, so uh, for there's to me, there's two books that every small business owner should read. Uh, I'm not a huge reader. I do audio books. So I get it. A lot of times it's because I don't have time. It's not because I can't read. But you know, I just don't like reading. I just I think school got that out of me. I just, I, I just, to me, I don't sit still well. So books, and typically what I find is people that don't sit still well don't do well with books in most cases. Some of you guys are ferocious readers. You love reading. Great. Uh, some of you aren't so good at that. That's one of the reasons why you probably listen to podcasts is because you'd rather do it and learn through audio. So even if you got the audio book, but there's two books that for sure you need to look at. One is uh, The E-Myth Revisited, uh, because that's going to help you understand the different hats that you wear within your business within your business by Michael Gerber. The second one is Profits First by Mike Michalowicz. And uh, you know, it's the concepts of it are fantastic and you need to do it. For some people it's a little hard to understand when he's going through it because some of the examples. So I'm going to kind of give you some highlights of it, but it's definitely one to uh, sometimes it's easier for that book to actually get the physical book so that way you can kind of go through it a little bit slower, but listen to the audio first. Now remember anytime people say, "Well, I don't have the money to buy on a book." Let me tell you something. If if I, you know, I went through this the other day. I wanted to get this book on coaching. Okay. And when I looked up how much this book was going to cost, I've listened to the audio and I'm like, you know what? I need to go through the slower so I can read a couple different things. And I went to see how much the book was and it was like going to be uh, 50 bucks or something like that. I'm like, who has a book in today's world? And it wasn't on Kindle. So I'm like, well, I can't even get that version of it because usually you can get Kindle for like 10 bucks. But I'm like, who on earth has a physical book for $50 nowadays? And I actually was going to pass on it. And then I started laughing at myself because I have this thing I say all the time that if someone said, Tammy, give me $50 and I'm going to give you $1,000, would you do it? And of course, who would not make that trade? $50 for $1,000? But I started laughing because here I was doing the very thing going, I'm not paying $50 for a book. So of course, I turned around and I ordered the book because I'm like going, you know what? I know the value that's inside this book that's going to help me grow the coaching side of my business, you know, and then I think about it on courses as well. You know, for example, the other day I was, uh, the last episode I was telling you how, you know, my course for helping you guys learn your PL is $50. And I know there's people that go $50, but you know what? Trust me, by the time you, just the one section on PL, even if you don't have any of the rest of it, you're going to walk away with hundreds and thousands of dollars more value than just that $50. And I laughed that here I was myself ready not to buy this book because of that same failed logic. So do me a favor, guys. You know what? When you're investing in yourself, and I know this is off topic what I wanted to talk about, but part of this whole uh, creating more profits is you investing in yourself so that you can grow and learn more. So get that book, Profits First, you know, get the ebook if you or the e-myth revisited as well if you want to go crazy. And don't forget the course if you want. No, but just kidding. But the main thing is I want you guys to invest in how you're going to start looking at your business differently from the profit side of it forward. All right. So let's kind of talk about that. When profits first, here's the basic thing. And it's not just his book. It's going to be a combination of what he says and what my personal philosophy is. All right. A lot of times we focus on top line sales. And when we focus on top line sales, we're not paying attention to what happens to that dollar. Now, you've heard me say this over and over because at the end of the day, every one of those dollars is accounted for, right? The first part of that dollar is going to go to the cost of making that dollar. So those are your cost of goods. So if if there's a certain number that comes out of that dollar. So let's just say that your cost of goods typically runs about 40%. So 40% of every dollar is going towards 
providing that service or that product. That means that 40 cents out of every dollar is automatically going towards, uh, is coming off of it. Then we have our expenses. So that leaves us 60 cents, right? Well, if we also know that looking at our expenses, that 25% goes towards expenses every single month. And by the way, for some of you, it's really low. And for others of you, it's really high. It's kind of weird. There's like no middle ground. It's either dirt cheap or very high. And I find that the more equipment you have and people, obviously it's more on the higher end. But let's just say 25%, because that's a good number, by the way. If 25% of our money is going towards expenses, we know, and everything's off of top line sales, okay? It's not off of the 60 cents you have left. It's off of the original dollar. So if 25 cents off, 25% of the original dollar, that means 25 cents more is taken away for expenses. So we only have 60 cents. So now we're going to take away the 25 cents. That leaves us with 35 cents. Okay. Therefore, the profit is 35 cents off of every dollar. So that's a really, that's actually really good. Okay. That's a good profit margin. Now, some people's businesses are going to be much higher because they have very low costs, very low overhead, and they're able to put more to the bottom line. And for some of you that have high costs and high expenses, that yours might come down to like 10 cents if you're lucky. And that's just the way that your business model is set up. So part of what we have to keep in mind is the type of business that you have, because I can sit there with some of you guys and say, okay, you're going to have this big high profit off of every dollar. And some of you, we have to, you know, just the nature of the business, it's going to be lower. A good example of this in big box retailing is Costco. Uh, Costco for the longest time, I don't know what their current margins are, but Costco or Sam's Club, stuff like that, they, for the longest time in price, uh, what was it called before? Price, not price line, but it was price something. Um, they used to run like at 10% margins as well. It was very low, but the, that's why they have the big bulking um, pallets of product and stuff like that, because they know they don't have to have near the amount of people on the floor to sell it. Whereas if you take something like a Walmart or something, you get a lot of a high employee expense because you got to have people on the floor. Um, stocking stuff, putting things up, cleaning up after people, doing all that. Well, a Costco takes out a lot of that uh, and a lot of racking and a lot of other costs because they just do these big old racks and put a pallet in and take the shrink wrap off and they invest in the cashier side. So they, they're more heavy on cashiers and stocking side more than anything. So they have low margins. Where meanwhile, you go to other businesses and they have much higher margins because they've got to pay all of that stuff. So if you go to like a Walmart, their margins are going to be much greater because they've got to pay all those employees and all those other expenses that they have to run their stores. Um, so everybody's a little bit different. So your business is going to be different. At the end of the day, we're all, we all have a profit. It doesn't matter what kind of business you have, there is a profit number. So the first thing you have to do is kind of take current stock of where you're at today. Uh, so part of what we want to do is say, because for some of you, when I'm looking at your P&Ls with you, because I have people that call me up to go over their P&Ls with them, one of the things that I find is that they don't even know what their profit margin is. They don't know how much of every dollar is put to their bottom line that they get to put in their pocket, if you will. Now, and it kind of gets confusing because some people, they don't pay themselves a paycheck. They just take the owner's draw, which is taking the money at the end of the day with what's left. Some people pay themselves a check and then there's profit at the end, which is the way that most people want to do it because you want to, your, your, um, what you're paying yourself should be part of that because it's going to be part of the labor cost uh, or the cost of goods, depending upon your particular business. And then the rest would be the owner's draw. Uh, And I know not all of you guys are going to fully understand kind of what I'm saying right now. This is why I'm trying to teach it. But some of you guys, you're familiar with this language or maybe your your, uh, accountant has used these words with you. But at the end of the day, what's left over typically is what you guys take. But here's the problem. What happens is we keep our fingers and toes and eyes and elbows and everything crossed, hoping that there's enough money at the end of the day to take out the amount of money that we want. So let's just say you take out $500 a week or... um, $3,000 $3,000 at the end of every month, whatever the case may be, you always like on a wish and a prayer and everything crossed under the sun that you're going to make that kind of money at the end of the month. The problem is you don't go into it automatically assuming this is what I need to do. And one of the things that I kind of show in the course and I've talked about, and I think I even did a YouTube video on this, I can't remember. But one of the things that you need to understand is you can actually start with the end in mind. And from there, you can figure out how much you need to do in sales based off of 
putting the profits first and having what you need at the end of the day. So for example, I sat down with a business owner and uh, the two business owners. And what we did is we figured out they needed $3,000. That would be ideal. Okay. At minimum, they needed 2000, but they, their ideal goal was 3000. I'm like, well, let's go with the ideal goal of 3000. Now let's work this thing backwards because using, since we already have information from the PNL of what their gross margin typically is, what their cost of goods typically run, what their expenses typically run, you're able to do a calculation backwards to figure out that they needed to do about $9,000 in sales. And at first, that number seems really overwhelming because right now they're not doing that. They're probably doing about six, $7,000 in sales. So needless to say, they're missing the profit goal, right? But by knowing this, we're now able to figure out that they needed $9,000 and we could sit there and we could brainstorm. So if we brainstorm using that typical two, 250 that I'm always hearing people say that is their average sale, yeah, that's a lot of sales to get to that $9,000. But instead, we also flipped it around a little bit and said, okay, well, how many, okay, there's a certain piece of your job that can get you $1,000. So how many of those do you have to do? Well, obviously nine. So, okay, so how do we go from doing one or two a month to trying to get nine of those a month or even seven of those while you build the rest of your business? Now it doesn't look as daunting to be able to hit that number. It's all about perspective because now they have a goal for their sales that they know they can do to in order to hit the profit goal that they have. So it's keeping those profits first. So that's one piece of it is you've got to know what the profit is you need at the end of the month and work the numbers backwards to know exactly what it is that you need to do in sales. The other thing that it will help you do is to focus by knowing those numbers. It also helps you realize that, hey, if I normally have, um, you know, here's one I get all the time too. It's like, well, I'm like, how much are your expenses? And they're like, uh, they don't really know the percentage. I'm like, okay, how much do you need in dollars? And they'll give me a dollar, so a dollar number. So they'll say $2,000 a month to do my stuff. And I go, okay. So then we get the PNL and we're actually looking at it. And the reality is they need about 2,500 to 3,000. The problem is a lot of you guys are guessing what you need in expenses to get through the month. The problem is because you're not looking at your PNL, you're forgetting about all the little ankle biters that are less than 1%, $25 here, $30 here, little tiny things that add up to an additional 500 to $700 in most cases. And that's where some of those profits are going. When you have a little, you have less money at the end of the day, it's because you're forgetting about the, you're not calculating in the fact that you have all these other little items that you're paying. You go for the big ones. Matter of fact, if you don't believe me right now, if I was to ask you how much money you need to get through the month, you're going to go rent. You're going to go utilities. You're going to go food. You're going to pick the big dogs out. All right. You're not going to forget about all the little things like going to the movies, having McDonald's every single day, getting your coffee in the morning. All of that crap adds up because if you do that five days a week at $5 a pop, that's $25 a week. There's $100 by the end of the month just doing that $5 a day. All of that adds up in our personal life. And guess what? It adds up in your business life as well. So you need to make sure that you know those numbers. Now, another part of the whole profit first is in order to be able to help you is you've got to look at your accounts because what you're doing is most of you guys, there's some people, oh, let me step back. There's some of you that are doing the biggest no-no in the world, which is you have one account and everything to do with your personal life and everything to do with your business is going through that account. That is the biggest no-no you could possibly ever do. Stop that immediately. You make that a to-do item and you get that taken care of in the next couple of days. You must have one account for your personal business and at minimum, you need to have one account for your business. Now we're gonna talk about having multiple accounts, but at minimum, the minimum, minimum standard, no matter who you are, if you're hearing me now, you must have two accounts, one personal, one for the business. And anytime you, when you take money out of the business, you do a literal trans, transaction transfer of one account into the other account before you spend that dime. Okay. Do not spend the money out of the business account unless it is for the business. Otherwise you need to transfer that money over and you need to get it into the personal account. But here's where people get in trouble. At the end of the day, they get in trouble because they never put aside the money for their taxes. Uh, they didn't set aside the money that they needed for their expenses. And what happens is they end up, and that's why their profits end up. So profit first kind of talks about having different accounts where you put the money. And one way that you can do that is by having actually four accounts. So let's talk about having four accounts. And they actually do make sense. And I actually went out, um, 
last year and did one of these myself. Uh, so the first one is you want your personal account. Absolutely. Then what you should do is you should create what's called a, ta- a savings account. Um, you don't necessarily need a checking account. You really need a savings account that you can mark as taxes. And this is where you take a certain percentage of your business every single month and put it into this account. For some of you, you send that money over to your account and they pay your taxes on a quarterly basis. Or if you're doing it, you need to do that. So If your taxes typically run 10, 15, 20% of your business, then you need to have this account that you go put the taxes, that money into it. And by the way, if it's a different bank, it's even better because out of sight, out of mind, especially because we can link all of our accounts up. And what happens is when money's tight, we're going to see an account sitting there with a couple thousand dollars in it. And it's really easy for you to be able to rob Peter to pay Paul. So for example, with my taxes, and this is what I was doing because I'm self-employed and I was always scrambling to try to come up with the tax money. I just create an account that now when I get paid, I just automatically transfer money over into this tax thing. So I know that this account has the tax money in it. And I know that while I, you know, if it's a really bad emergency, I know it's there, but my goal is to never touch it just so that I can pay the taxes. So having that tax account is wonderful. Now, a lot of one, another account that that he talks about in the book that really makes sense for the vast majority of people is having a fourth account uh, well, no, this will be our third. So we got a personal, we're going to have our operating account. Now, typically your operating account is already the account that you're using for your business. So uh, your business account that's holding majority of your money for your business, that's going to be your operating account. That's the account that you're going to pay your bills and do everything else. So that's more than likely the current business account that you have. But he also says, create a fourth account, which has to do with profits. So this is where you take the money that, you know, you have a certain amount budget because you're going to have that dreaded B word. You're going to have a budget and you know that you need to always have three, $4,000 in it to be able to pay your expenses and what you need. But then you have this profit account where you pull the money out and you just build that profit account up. Um, so you're going to pay yourself as an employee out of the operating account but you're going to start building up that profit account because you know that you're going to have a certain amount. So in his book, what he actually teaches you is how do you slowly grow that profit account? Now you can sit there and you can say, hey, I want to make $3,000 at the end of the month and have that as my profit. uh, And I'm automatically going to fill that account up with the 3,000. Well, the reality is you kind kind of slowly get there. So what he talks about is the fact that you can do that slowly. You know what, how can you increase your profits by 1%, by 2%, by 3%, 5%, 10%, slowly build that up to where you are paying yourself first. Because here's the thing, if you make a commitment to yourself that you're going to make this $3,000, it's going to force you to look backwards into the other accounts and it's going to force you to look backwards on how you spend your money. Because at the end of the day, if it comes down to, do I put 10 cents into my profit account? I don't want to use 10 cents. Do I put $100, let's just use $100. Do I put $100 into my profit account or do I keep the $100 in my operating account? Typically what we're doing today in our mind is we're choosing the operating account every single time. And then if there happens to be anything left out of that $100, I'll go ahead and move it into the profit account. But in his saying is what he's saying is, no, you need to commit to yourself that this $100 is going into your profit account and you need to control your expenses better and figure out where you're spending that money. And it really does make you look at things a little bit different because now instead of just willy-nilly saying, hey, this is going to stay in the operating account, you're going to look at your expenses and say, how can I reduce my expenses? Do I really need these things? And for most of you, you can probably go through your expenses and I'll bet you you can clean up $100, $200, $300 right away of stuff you no longer use, you no longer need. You know what, if you see that your expenses, for example, on your vehicles is going from $500 to $1,500, $2,000, down to $500, up to $1,000, down to two. Instead of just saying, oh, well, I'm going to continue to have this problem, how about you figure out how can you reduce that? What's the number one thing that you're spending money on? If it's tires, then you need to ask yourself, are you buying just cheap tires? Are you going over willing and dealing, getting the cheapest tires you can, which is why you're going through? You know what? A $20, $25 tire is only as good as what you put on it. Now, I'm not saying go buy the $200 tires or whatever the case may be, but somewhere you can't tell me there's not a compromise where that tire is going to last longer. You know, sometimes you have to take quality over that and say, I'm willing to spend more money on something because it's going to last me longer. That's a smarter business decision. When I bought my ice cream shop, for example, 
Um, I inherited it. This guy had it. I bought the business from him. And we had three little refrigerators. And every time they would break, he would sit there and he would put band-aids on them. And they were constantly going down, constantly going down. Finally, I got to the point where I was like, all right, this needs to stop. I talked to the guy who fixes the refrigerators. I'm like, what's it going to cost to make this refrigerator right? And I, although I had to swallow and gulp, I knew that me paying him a trip charge and constantly coming out fixing these things in a band-aid kind of way just was not working. And if I spent the money and just got it done right the first time, these refrigerators would last a hell of a lot longer and my expenses would ultimately go down over the course of the next year. And that's exactly what happened. Is So the first time it broke, I fixed it the right way. And guess what? I didn't have to worry about that fridge nearly as often as I was having to beforehand. And I ended up saving more money because of fixing it right the first time and spending the money that I needed to. So the same thing with some of your expenses. Are you just having things that you're putting band-aids on and it's constantly eating into your profit? So there's a lot of different ways that you can go out there. You can also, if you're going to have to rob, you can look at your cost of goods. Can you buy something better? Do you need to buy everything? You know what? A lot of people, for example, they overbuy all the time. And then when they overbuy, they just throw it in their truck or throw it in the garage instead of taking it back. You know what? Or maybe you just need to to plan up it. Whatever the case may be, you've got to start looking at it differently where you're concentrating on that bottom line number. If that bottom line number is $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, whatever that number is, start thinking of it differently going, I'm going to protect these dollars. These dollars are my babies. These these profit dollars are mine to keep. And you're going to have to pry them out of my hands. How can I run my business differently going forward? Am I priced competitively? Do I need to look at my product costs or costs associated with that? Do I need to look at my expenses? Now, I'm not telling you to be cheap. I'm not telling you to be miserly. I'm not telling you to be unfair. I'm not telling you to gouge people. I'm not telling you any of that. So please make sure you hear me correctly. All I'm saying is you need to step back and look at how you're running your business. The key is, are you running your business correctly? That's the bigger question that you need to ask yourself, okay? And it all starts with you understanding how to read your profit and loss statement, your income statement. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it is the form that spits out from your QuickBooks. It's the form that your accountant bookkeeper gives you every single month. It's in that envelope, that yellow envelope, they give it to you and you kind of shove it off to the side. Okay. That's not what you need to grab that paper. You need to look at it. I can't tell you how many people I talk to that have them They know where they're at, but they've never looked at them. And the reason is when they look at it, it's gobbledygook. It's just a bunch of numbers on the page. I'm telling you, those numbers on the page are the key to you unlocking your profit potential and knowing how to work this thing backwards so that way you can put more profit in. And here's the thing. I know you don't know it. It's okay. That's what I'm here for. That's why these Thursday episodes are dedicated to helping you understand your business numbers better. If you want to dive in, like I said, I, I've got the course. It's only $50, people. I, I've decided I'm not going to change the price. I Now, if you're listening to this several years ago, it might be changed. Um, or wait, several years in the future, it's probably going to change, not seven years ago. But you know, sometimes I'll go back and I'll binge listen to a podcast and I'm listening to episodes two, three years ago because the stuff is all relevant. It's going to be relevant in the future. So it might change if you're listening into the future. I don't know, but it's still going to be very reasonable because I don't want to gouge you on this. I want to help teach you, educate you and grow you. Okay. And so, you know, know your business numbers, course.com. It's in the show notes. Um, I just know I couldn't buy one of the versions of it, which is why it sounds so weird. Uh, you know what? Go to localsmallbusinesscoach.com slash numbers. That's another way to get there. Localsmallbusinesscoach.com slash numbers. That'll get you there if that's easier to remember. Show notes, whatever the case may be. Just learn this stuff, guys. You know what? You need to dive into it. If you don't do anything and you just start looking at the paper, you're going to start figuring it out. Start asking questions. Um, you know what? But in the course, I'm going to actually show you why you need the percentages, how to use the percentages to your advantage. We're talking about, um, I, you know, I'm going to, the one I'm going to, the part part I'm going to load up today is how to look for trends, how to look for things that are happening in the business so you can start asking better questions to see where your money's going. I mean, my whole goal is to listen to you guys. And as you guys give me feedback and more that you would like in there, I'm going to continue to add stuff. This is about you for you. That's what I want to do. This is not about trying to sell it. I don't care how you learn the information. Like I said, 
Google it, go to YouTube, go to the course. You know what? Send me an email, send what, whatever you need to do. I do one-on-one coachings. I've gotten on the phone with people where we, you know what? You can do a one-time coaching session and we just kind of go through, show you how to read it. We can have ongoing. I've got people that I meet with on a, every week or, or at least once a month, you know what? And we kind of go over their stuff. I don't care. I really don't care. You can find a mentor. You can find another business owner that you work with. I don't care. All I care about is that you do what you need to do to understand your numbers better. I want you guys to start thinking of profits first. And I know I've been sounding like a broken record on the last two episodes. It's because I I get so fired up. I have been talking to so many of you guys over the last month about this. And I know we've hit a nerve. And whenever I feel that we've hit a nerve, I want to run with it because it is such a need out there. You guys bust your butt. I tell you this all the time. This is why you're badasses. You bust your butt. And I want to give you the tools to be successful. I want to be part of your tool belt. I want to be one of your mentors, your virtual mentors on this podcast of helping you get your business even better. But I want you to start thinking profits first. I want you to start thinking backwards. I want you to start knowing what that number at the end of the day is and using the numbers in your business to move it forward to find out what your sales need to be. All right. If I was to tell you that your number to hit your goal, wouldn't that be wonderful to know this is what my uh, profit goal is. This is what I want to make at the end of the month. And how can I calculate that out to know what I need to do in sales? There's a way to do that. I teach you that, for example, in the course. Okay. When I do one-on-one coaching with people, guess what? I teach them how to do that. We go through it. You know, it doesn't, you can learn to love your numbers. You don't have to love math. Guess what? I've got tools in there that that calculate it all out for you in some cases, okay? But it's fun. When you start knowing how it all works together, I, I, I watch, I love watching people's eyes when they go from, oh my God, this is scary, it doesn't make sense, to all of a sudden they get it, aha, and they get excited. That's a wonderful thing. That's how I want you guys to be about your business. I'm rattling again. I know it's time for me to get going. But once again, let me just kind of recap. The four uh, business accounts that I mentioned today was having a personal account that you run all your personal finances, you pay your mortgage, your bills, your uh, uh, utilities, your uh what am I thinking of food, (laughs) all that stuff. That's your personal account. You're going to have an operating account for your business. And this is what you're going to pay your expenses, pay for your cost of goods, things like that. That's going to come out of your operating account. You're going to have an account set up for your taxes. So that way it's out of sight, out of mind. You put those taxes somewhere. So that way you have them set aside for your quarterly taxes and your year in taxes. And you can adjust that each year. If you have way too much money in it, then you can kind of adjust it. But uh, it's another great way to save up some money. So even if it's sitting in that tax account. You never get in trouble with the tax man or woman. And at the end of the day, you've got some money set over there. And then finally, you want your profits uh, where you're taking money and you're pulling it out every single month and putting it into the profit account. So this way, you know that your profits are growing uh, and those profits can be used to reinvest back into the business uh, in the future or take out as an owner's draw. So I forgot to talk about that. So your profit account is used for two things. It's um, funds, for example, because we want to be debt free, right? So it could be something that you continue to build up to whatever you need, because this way it's part of the money that you're going to take out every month for yourself as an owner. But then the second part is money that you're going to reinvest back into your business to buy equipment, uh, tools, uh, vehicles, whatever the case may be. So your profit account is used for a couple different things. But at the end of the day, your goal is this is how much money I want to set aside for profits. And that's why you understand it. Once again, it's Profits First is the book by Mike Michalowicz. Uh, you know, I highly recommend it to everybody. I think it's a great tool, even if you just learn the basics of it, but, uh, or keep listening because we're going to continue to talk about it, uh, here in, um, in the podcast at the same time, because I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm on a mission. All right. I'm rattling. I'm already at half hour and I was trying to cut this one a little shorter. I didn't work that one out too well. All right. With that, I'm done and I will talk to you on the next episode. So get out there, kick some butt. All right. Go be the badass. I know you are. Bye. Hey, before you go, if you're looking to learn more about your business numbers, then check out the Know Your Business Numbers course, where we take a deeper dive into the key numbers, the calculations, the reports that will help you take your business to the next level. My mission is to help everyone love their business numbers. Yes, even including those of you that hate math. So much profit is hidden inside of your business numbers, and I want you to create some awesome, 
profits. So check out the link in the show notes or head on over to the knowyourbusinessnumberscourse.com. Once again, knowyourbusinessnumberscourse.com. Come join me. Let's go ahead and work on building your profits.